Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergarga.com and in this video we are going to look at some examples of the choose function in Excel, a relatively unknown lookup and reference function. It does not have the popularity of its siblings in VLOOKUP and INDEX and MATCH but this is quite a simple to use function and can be very useful also. A nice alternative. Now I want to begin with a nice simple example here to get to grips of what it does and how. And what it does is the choose function can return a value or a reference. So that's a big strength of it. Uh, but it's dependent upon an index number. So check out this first example where I have four months of five product sales. And in cell C1, I have a month number entered of two, which relates to February. So in cell E1, I would like to sum the month that is specified by a value in cell C1. So I could use the sum function for the summing aspect of it. But the month I sum is dependent on the value in C1. So let's bring in the choose function to look up and to find the correct column or the correct month. Now the choose function will prompt for an index number. It is what it does. It's what it's based on. Now the index number is specified by cell C1. So I'm going to select that and then put in my comma, and then it's a case of the list of those values or those references to return. Now in this example, I want to sum a range. So it's going to be a range or a reference that I return here, not a value as it may uh, specify by the question, and be a bit misleading maybe. So I'm going to begin by selecting my first range, because if the index number is one, I want to do that one. I simply then put in a comma and continue with my list. So here's item two in the list, comma, March range is item three in the, wrist, uh, in the list, comma, April is item number four in the list. And you can see that you can continue. I'm being prompted for potentially a fifth, potentially a sixth, and so on. I'll then close down the bracket for the choose function, a close in bracket for the sum function, and when I press enter, I have the total of February, this total here of these five cells. But in cell C1, if I type number one, I've got the total from January, and if I type four, the total from April, and if I type three, I think you know what's coming, it's the total from March. So the range that it sums is being picked from this list of four values dependent on this index number. Quite a simple uh, job and a simple function to put together, but this can be clever, very clever and as I say, a nice alternative in your lookup functions. So let's proceed and look at three other useful real world examples for this choose function. Now, one of the best uses of the choose function, I think, is when working with form controls. So in this example, I have a chart on screen that's already been set up. I have some uh, values which I've simply copied and pasted from the previous sheet. And then I've got a little bit of setup at the top here. Using the developer tab, I have inserted some form controls. I've inserted four option buttons and I have labeled them with the month headers. And if I was to go into the properties of one of these form controls, one of these option buttons, I can see a cell link for each one of them to cell A1. So when I make a selection in them, you can see the value in cell A1 changing because the form controls in Excel return an index number of the cell that they're linked to. And with the choose function running off an index number, that makes them a very nice combination. They go together lovely. 
Now apologies if you're new to some of this stuff because this video is not about creating charts, it's not about creating form controls. So although they are a byproduct of this example, the video would be too long if I'm going to demonstrate all of this stuff as well. But with this setup and a brief introduction to this example done there, these cells here where I have the word January and the cells need to be looked up from the month selection. So they should be bringing me the data for March at the moment because March was selected and not January. So let me delete that January data and my chart is now not a happy bunny. But in cell B4, let's look for the information that we want. So it is equals and it is choose. That is what this video is all about. So it's the choose function. Let's get this underway. Where is the index number? It is cell A1. This could quite easily be a different sheet, but this is the index number that is put there from an option button selection. Comma, what value are we bringing in? Well, if they've chosen number one, January, I wanna go over to this other sheet for our data, and I'm just going to select the header for January. Now in the formula at the top, I need to be a little bit aware of uh, some absolute references here. That reference to A1 needs to be fixed, but the reference to January does not. Uh, what I'm now going to do is put in my comma and back over to that other sheet. I need to select February if it's number two, comma, March if it's number three, comma, April if it's number four, close bracket and enter. So the ending result as a formula is this. Looks a little bit nasty with the sheet reference in there continually. Simple demo, simple demo, simple demo, etc. But here we have whatever index number is there. The January title, the February title, the March title, the uh, April uh, title. And because of the way we've used the references, I can copy that down and it will fetch the values. Now zoom in out, if I make a selection in an option button, that is now affecting the values here, and then ultimately for this example, the chart. So they can be a nice way of creating an interactive chart that is dependent on a selection from a form control, like the option buttons demonstrated here. But it could quite easily be a list box or a combo box or some other form control. Continuing with the use of form controls, I wanted to show an example with something different, another form control. And this time it's a list box. And I kind of have a repetition here of the first simple example, but taking it that little bit further by introducing a form control, rather than someone just typing one, two, three, or four, like in this example. So here we have a list box. This was inserted using a developer tab, just like previous. And if I select it and go into the properties for it, we can see that it is using a cell link of G1. And there's G1 at the moment at the top with number one written in, because Bristol is selected, and it's coming from the input range of H1 to H3, which is just simply these three places here. Now, obviously all this information does not need to be on one sheet. It looks a little bit cluttered, uh, but I'm only doing this for the purposes of this demonstration. So it's easier to see what's going on and how it works. What we want to do is sum the correct column, but based on the selection of um, the list box. So the sum function in the cell here, followed by choose. What's the index number? Yes, it's G1, comma, and then a case of there's range one, there's range two, and here's range three. So returning three different references 
which here is Bristol, Manchester, Sunderland. So three different places rather than January, February and March. I can then close off, choose, close off some. And here we have it. And if I choose Manchester from the list box, it reacts. Sunderland from the list box, it reacts. So the purpose of this example is showing uh, an, another form control to get a feel for what's out there. And also taking a first example further with respect of the formula. Now please bear in mind as well that although I'm using the sum function, the most popular function of all in Excel, this could be any function that could benefit from a range being given to it uh, by choose. And the list of functions that could find some benefit there is endless. For the last example of the choose function, we are going to see it being used in a very cool way. We are going to use it to allow VLOOKUP to look to its left. Yes, you heard it. Many people say how the VLOOKUP function can only look to its right and that it's not so versatile, but it can be made to look to its left. And the choose function is a key to that. So in this simple example, I have a department in column one and the name in column two of our table array. I would like to return the department for an entered name, which you can see is in cell D2 right now. So I would like to return finance as a department because Michelle in cell D2 works in finance. So VLOOKUP function equals VLOOKUP happening in cell E2 here and the lookup value is the name entered in D2. I then put in my comma and it prompts for the table array. Now this is where the choose function will help us. So we start to type choose and it prompts us for the index number. Now for the first time in this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to enter an array of values as opposed to a single value. So I've wrapped them in these curly braces here to indicate it's an array. And I've put a two column array here, one and two. With a comma after that and a little box tracking us through the function so we don't get lost as these different brackets, but also commas and that are entered. Value one is going to be the column of names. I then put in a comma and value two is the column of departments. So what I'm doing here is I'm reversing them using the choose function for the purpose of VLOOKUP. I'm making the second column column one and the first column number two and that's been provided as the array to VLOOKUP. Pretty sweet. A close bracket for choose, a comma, and VLOOKUP is then back to normal. It will be the second column that we return from, and it will be false for an exact match because I'm looking for specific names. When I press enter, we have finance as we uh, hoped we would, but in the name, if I type Ben, I would get marketing, and if I typed Sean, I would get compliance, and so on. As it's now looking down B, well, technically it's not, but the choose function is reversing these. So although the VLOOKUP returns from number two, it's returning number two from this. This array function and the reversal of these two columns. So it gives the appearance that VLOOKUP is able to look down B and return from A. Something that we are misled into saying is, well, not misled, because on its own it can't do it, uh, but an easy tweak, and we now have VLOOKUP uh, looking to its left. A pretty cool technique. And our third, or if you include the simple demo, fourth example of the choose function in this video. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel. And please come and check us out at computergaga.com.